Research and innovation in Futuris. Insulin-dependent diabetes is on the rise all around the world, but the causes of this disease remain unclear. There is a theory, however, that improving living standards with sterile environments, urban lifestyles and industrialised food are weakening the immune system and causing the illness. Our search for answers starts in Finland, the country with the highest incidence of type 1 diabetes in the world. Irena lives in a suburb of Helsinki. When she was 10, she was rushed to hospital after suddenly feeling very ill. I'm lucky to be alive. I had to recover in the emergency ward for several days. Irina was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, and since then she needs regular insulin injections to maintain proper blood sugar levels. I have to always have syringes at hand to take an injection of rapid-acting insulin before every meal and a long-acting shot every evening. It's still unclear what exactly causes diabetes. A European research study is testing the hygiene hypothesis, suggesting that clinically clean homes and bacteria-free food may actually undermine our health. The Diamune Research Project screens hundreds of infants and young children in Finland to find out why so many of them will fail to develop resistance against autoimmune diseases in later life. It might be that it's too clean, the environment here, and we have too clean. That's maybe one reason why we have allergics and everything like that. Various test samples and other data collected at hospitals are being delivered to the laboratories participating in the international project. Here at the Biomedicum Helsinki Research Center, the investigation is being led by Professor Mikael Knip, Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Helsinki. So we have uh, serum samples, RNA samples, uh, rectal swab samples, stool samples, uh, here we have the nasal swab sample, and uh, this is a, a, a sample from the milk uh, that the child is drink, uh, drinking, and here we have a dust sample obtained from the bed of uh, the uh, child. These samples may contain clues as to which important infections in early life may be missing in Finland, with its largely urban population, sterilized milk, strong cleaning disinfectants, and cold climate that inhibits spreading of pathogens. Currently, we believe that uh, infections which the child experienced before the age of one year are very important. And, and if the child uh, lacks these infections, the immune regulation doesn't develop. And that leads to the disease like diabetes or allergy. To test this hypothesis, scientists also take samples from neighboring Estonia and the Russian Republic of Karelia, where the incidence of type 1 diabetes is six times lower than in Finland, possibly due to the lower living standards. There is evidence that uh, you have a, a heavier microbial load in Russian Karelia compared uh, to Finland. And uh, of course we think that that fits into the hygiene hypothesis that uh, with more uh, uh, microbes early in life you have less of uh, uh, these autoimmune, and, uh, autoimmune diseases and allergies. We cross the Finnish Russian border to visit the Karelian capital Petrozovotsk. In this city of 270,000, more than 60 nurseries participate in the Diabimmune study. Volunteering families take the same tests, measurements and fill the same questionnaires as their Finnish counterparts. There are a lot of varying questions on diet and lifestyle, not just of the child, but also of the whole family. The questionnaires allow scientists to gather data on the condition of every child's early life to see how this correlates with symptoms of predispositions to diabetes. Each family fills in several forms, starting with detailed questions on the mother's pregnancy, further development of the child, family illnesses, information on vaccinations, and so on. As a result, we get a considerable amount of data, which is entered into our online database. The study, which will continue until at least 2013, should help scientists discover the microbial factors provoking or preventing diabetes, 
This could result in the development of a vaccine against the disease, using, for instance, probiotic food products for children. Мы достигли определенных успехов в лечении, но мы лечим проявления. We have reached a certain success in treating diabetes, but so far we can only treat the symptoms and fight complications. Our real task is to prevent the autoimmune process from starting, or at least to stop this process if it is already developing in the pancreas. This is why our goal is to find the causal factors of diabetes. When we get to know our enemy, we will know how to fight it. So far, tens of thousands of frozen test samples from Karelian children are stored in Petrozavodsk. The researchers are waiting for the expected amendment in Russian legislation that would authorize export of biological materials for studies to Europe. Meanwhile, another European project is underway in Montpellier, France. A new high-tech system is currently going through clinical trials. It constantly monitors the blood glucose levels of diabetic patients, warning them if corrective action is needed. Wireless sensors fixed on the patient's body measure their blood composition and physical activity. These two sensors communicate with the third device. This prototype has been developed within the Diadvisor project. This device uses the data collected by the sensors to predict the change in the glucose level over the next two hours. The portable device indicates the fluctuations of glucose in the patient's blood and predicts what will be needed in the future based on each patient's individual characteristics. The system is being tested on 60 volunteers in three European countries. It's not much bigger than a mobile phone. When I don't feel good and I'm approaching hyperglycemia, I take it out from my pocket, push a button, see the advice and follow it. The system takes into account physical activity, meals, insulin injections and other factors, allowing it to make timely and accurate predictions. Knowing about your lowering glucose level allows you to take action. Eat some sugar to avoid hypoglycemia, and the same with hyperglycemia. A sound signal that we receive allows us to correct that and to avoid the long-term side effects. For the clinical study, the indications of the day advisor device are controlled using blood samples. According to one of the study's leaders, Professor Eric Renard, this unique prediction system can be extremely helpful to patients who require such advice in their daily lives. The most difficult thing for those with diabetes treated with insulin is making decisions. Very often, even knowing that the glucose level isn't right, even educated patients don't know what to do because they're afraid to make the wrong decision. So this system will reassure them, telling them exactly what they need to do. The first tests have shown that this system is correct in more than 90% of cases and it never gives the wrong advice. Sometimes it can be a little imprecise, but always generally right. Further development of intelligent algorithms can allow it to create an artificial pancreas, making insulin-dependent diabetes a lesser problem for millions of people around the world.